What is up everyone and welcome to a video that a lot of you are going to find interesting because I've been having countless questions about it and that is a four month later look at my iPad mini 3. This thing is a wonderful little device but a few of you were shocked to see that my channel did not turn into an iPad app and case review channel after I got my iPad. I think a few of you are disappointed but don't worry if you search other people's YouTube channels I'm sure you'll find that kind of thing. I'm just going to say it out there straight away, I have 0% interest in reviewing cases and applications for this thing and I don't even use this thing as my go-to device, believe it or not. I'll explain it all in a second. It's not a wasted purchase, I'm not going to return it. The iPad is brilliant at a few things, a handful of things that nothing else out there could do. But I'm going to explain my relationship with my iPad, how I use it, the things that I use it for. More, important, more importantly, if I can speak, the things I don't use it for. And I'm just going to generally try and address a couple of the questions that people have been asking about my iPad. So, I've owned my iPad for four months now. It is time to take a look back, see how those four months have been. Was the purchase worthwhile? Let's chat about my Apple iPad Mini 3. So, I think it's important to get one of the biggest questions out of the way, and that is, Tom, do you still have your iPad? Indeed I do, I still own it, it is right there behind me on the desk, and it is a cracking little device. I will say straight up before I say anything else in this video, it is a fantastic device. It is leaps and bounds ahead of any other tablet that I've used. I have not had a lot of tablet experience, by the way, but I think the iPad is a seamless, smooth, um, sleek, gorgeous kind of device. It's just so nice and Apple and yes I probably sound like a fanboy but a quick flick through my channel will show that I'm not. I just think it's a very very nice effective clean device and I do enjoy using it. So when I bought my iPad uh, I believe I made the video January 14th um, people said ah Tom the iPad will become your go-to device for media consumption, uh, web browsing, YouTube videos, all this kind of thing. The funny thing is it hasn't. Um, I still much prefer to use the desktop, or if I can't use the desktop, use my laptop to do all those kind of things because everything on the iPad is stripped back. Naturally, you get less options on the iPad than you do on OS X because OS X is a fully fledged desktop OS that's designed for an actual computer, whereas iOS and its applications are, you know, more slimmed down to make the user friendly experience more user friendly and stuff and to avoid a cluttered uh, workflow. And that is cool with me, but because of the, the lack of options and how much of a geek I am, I much prefer web browsing and all of the above things that I mentioned on an actual Mac. And 9 times out of 10, or maybe 49 times out of 50, or 98 times out of 100, I, I go to my Mac first and foremost, and I will only browse and stuff on the iPad if I have to. Now I know a lot of people that choose the iPad as their preferred primary method of browsing. For me it's just not the case, but I am a special case in some way because I do have my visual impairment and even though you can zoom in a lot on the iPad, the screen is still a lot smaller than a 15 inch MacBook Pro or the, the three 20 plus inch screens that I've got behind me. So there is that. I may find it a little bit too small. It's kind of hard to say whether it's my eyesight or, or other things, but my point that I'm trying to make is it is not my go-to device. People said that it would become my go-to device and it just hasn't. And in a way, I'm kind of glad that I was right, but in another way, because it was such an expensive device, I'm kind of gutted that I cannot get more day-to-day -day use out of it. And when I start describing the things that I use the iPad for, you can imagine that it easily sits in my bag for four, five, maybe even six days without even getting looked at. Let's talk about a few things that I actually use then. The number one app that I've found the most use for in the last four months is an app called QUPAD. A company called Allen & Heath make this app and it is specifically designed to control their QU series of digital mixers. Now I have full access to an Allen & Heath QU24 and that is the desk that I use for the majority of my PA gigs. This is a fantastic modern age digital mixer and you can control every aspect of the front end 
on your iPad. That includes everything from front of house, so everything the audience hears, everything from input gain right the way down to effects and EQs and whatnot on the outputs, as well as all the monitor mixes. You, you can pretty much control everything from the iPad. So you plug a router into the back of the desk, it hosts its own Wi-Fi, and then you just wander around the venue tweaking things, listening to the PA, oh yeah, this is good, you can walk to the back of the room. You know, it, it makes life so much easier. And before we had the Allen & Heath QU desk, um, we used analog desks and having both the digital desk now and the iPad combined it just makes our lives so much easier it is very flexible but as you can imagine I don't have PA gigs every day so this is probably one of my most used apps but I, I, I don't have gigs every day so of course I don't use the app every day. It's only needed in a gigging scenario because even if you were using the QU24 at home for recording you'd probably be sitting in front of it. Now a lot of you probably aren't aware of digital mixers and what they do but it's worth looking into even if you're not audio people because that is a massive use in my world, in the world of audio and stuff out there. That is a massive use for the iPad. So many audio guys are using it to control their mixers and loads of other cool things. There are a few apps that I do have installed that are very handy for things like spectrum analyzers and sort of go-to information for sound and whatnot, which I have found really, really useful over the last four months. And I, just based on sound, even though I use the iPad for lots more than that, just based on the sound stuff, um, the iPad is worth keeping alone because it is so convenient. Uh, I and the other person that uses the QU24 and the actual owner of the QU24, we each have an iPad and since the recent update you can use two iPads simultaneously to control the desk. So that means up to three people can control the same mixer at the same time. Makes it so easy at big festivals and stuff. And you know, if you want to go to the burger van and grab a burger and you still want to control the PA and you know, say if you walk over and you're there and you're putting your ketchup on your burger and you see a little bit, you hear a little bit of feedback or whatever, whip out the iPad, tweak it down, job done. It is marvellous and I cannot stress that enough. Next up is stage lighting. Now I do a lot of stage lighting but I do much much more in the summer so unfortunately I haven't had the chance to use the application to control my lighting desk as much as I've had the chance to use the application that controls my sound desk. So my lighting desk is a 088 Leapfrog 48 and it runs the operating system Xeros. This is 088's current operating system that runs on all of their desks apart from the lower end stuff that run proprietary operating systems. Now Xeros has a remote control, um, but the annoying thing is that the remote control is kind of determined by your screen resolution. What do I mean by this? I mean that if you are installing the iOS app on your iPhone, it sees the low screen res and then it becomes a rigorous remote. If you install it on your iPad, it sees the, the large um, the large kind of screen resolution and then it becomes like an external monitor. Now one cool thing is even though it just becomes a big monitor, a giant monitor, I can still control the front front panel of my desk but I do have to change a couple of options every single time I want to do that and also it changes the main output of my desk as well. So my lighting desk is not perfectly optimized to run with the application and I believe the application was last updated in 2011. 088 aren't the biggest company out there and they're not the most high-end lighting company by any means but please please I really want them to update their app put in much much more features make it much more stable and usable now it's not as handy using an iPad app to control a lighting desk as it is a sound desk unless you're programming rigging plotting that kind of thing and then it's really handy especially for someone like me I can stand on the stage and I can if I've got a couple of movers or whatever I can see the gobos directly in front of me and use my iPad to focus whereas before I'd have to stand at the desk do a little bit of focusing, run back to the stage, take a look, look if it's in focus, then run back, blah, 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 or get someone to uh, focus spot for me, which is always a pain, you know, because you're shouting, like, oh, is it in focus or whatever. Now you can walk around, do it with your iPad, but like I said, it's a little bit clunky, and also I haven't really had the opportunity to use it in a real life situation. I've only played about with it a couple of times with my desk in my bedroom, but after the summer, I'll be able to let you guys know how it goes with the 088 app. And of course, I can have them both running at the same time with multitasking, on the iPad so if I'm controlling my lighting desk and sound desk at the same time just with you know a bit of a home button tap and a swipe I can swap between controlling my lighting and sound desk on the move even if I'm nowhere near the desks. Um, however 
I've just realized that I would have to swap Wi-Fi for that because they need Wi-Fi to host separately. I'd have to look into whether I could use the same router for both desks. You probably could. It's probably worth looking into. I think I could, um, but I may have to do a couple of setting adjustments and stuff anyway, so that is something. To finish off the lighting segment then, there are all sorts of applications you can get out there that help you with lighting, especially things to do with filters. If you use Lee filters or Roscoe filters, there are filter guides, uh, basically like filter catalogs that are on the iPad digitally that give you all of the color, they give you the mood, the color temperature, the name, uh, the color code, all of this kind of thing. And you can scroll down them and there's all different ways you can sort your colors. It's, re it's a really good color management system. There are also all sorts of handy tools, all of these tools in one app as well. I can't remember what the app is called, but it gives you dip switch settings, it gives you this, it gives you that. And it just turns the iPad into a very handy and small, easy to use lighting handbook for everyone. There are certain apps out there as well that specialize in almost like giving you the manual for every moving light. So if you go to a place and you're not that familiar with the movers, um, which is often the case, especially if you're touring, you can bring up the manual quickly on your iPad and you can save pages from those selected manuals in certain sections on your iPad. Um, on this app on your iPad so that you can swap between a maybe um, a DMX page from a Mac 250 mover and a DMX page from a Mac 500 mover and swap and see the difference in DMX channels and things like that. It's very, very handy. Like I say, I haven't had um, a big chance to use it in the real world yet, but later on in the year, it will definitely come in handy. So putting lighting and sound aside, I know not a lot of people can relate to that, but there are a lot of professionals that use the iPad for lighting and sound. A couple of other things that I'd like to mention that I use my iPad for, and then we are pretty much done with this update video. Thing number one is uh, iCloud with iWork or iWork using iCloud or whatever. Now I have started, um, I didn't think I'd do this ever, but I've started to store a lot of iCloud, a lot of pages documents, sorry, in the cloud, in iCloud, so that I can access them on my Mac, my two Macs, and my iPad and everything is seamless and that's exactly what I did. When, whenever you see me using my iPad for notes on the video, like if I'm looking down and I've got notes here and I'm, I'm, I'm waving my hands about and I've got my iPad, like in the Q&As, I've always typed it up on my Mac and then I can just open it on my iPad and it is much easier to have my iPad here than my full-on MacBook Pro, which is right here on my lap and taking up a load of space. So I think I've used it for video notes in three videos now and it has been handy and I, really handy. It's actually, um, inspired me to start using notes, not scripts, nothing anywhere near scripts, just notes because sometimes I release a video and it goes live and then two weeks later I remember a very valid point that I forgot to mention in that video. So the iPad has inspired me to start note taking and um, more importantly reading notes during videos which is really helpful. I'm going to try and use it more also behind the camera, not just for these talking to the camera type videos, behind the camera as well, which is really cool. So pages, iCloud, all the syncing up with the uh, with the Mac and stuff, absolutely great. It's a little bit sluggish on my crappy Wi-Fi with my rubbish upload speeds and whatnot, but if I get a new router, that'll improve it, and then if I get a new internet connection, that'll improve it even more. It'll be a lot more seamless, and, and the, the technology itself is fantastic. On top of that, one of my biggest reasons for getting the iPad was for a portable jukebox. As you guys know, I did want to hold off to get the 128 gigabyte iPad mini 3, but uh, I didn't and I bit the bullet and got the 64 gig. Do I regret it? No, I don't, because even though, like I told you guys, I have over 75 gigabytes of music and it's nearly 80 gig by now, um, I managed to slim it back to the point where everything I needed was on the iPad. If I took away duplicates, you know, greatest hits albums or live albums or, uh, you know, sort of now. 46 which is randomly in my iTunes library and I don't even need it and it's from years ago if I strip back all of that kind of thing um, and my whole music library fits on my iPad I've got about 50 gigabytes of music on my iPad and considering I don't have that many apps installed I do have a little bit of free space for breathing room so that the system doesn't become sluggish and if I ever do want to record a video or whatever on my iPad then I can do that so I do have DJ installed simply for being able to play a whole playlist of songs and shuffle with a, a timed crossfade and that 
I have used that for a gig, it's worked very well. It's very handy carrying around my iPad knowing that I've got, you know, 50 gigabytes of music from all sorts of different genres and if I need to play a song at a gig or do anything anywhere then I can uh, I can play that music and also it's great on the bus um, I, I know I've got that music on me I've got a, a few albums on my phone that I sometimes listen to but I find myself taking out my iPod video less and less because I've got my iPad uh, which holds nearly as much as my iPod so in terms of that use I'm glad that it's worked out um, my next iPad, if this one breaks or whatever, or I decide to upgrade when the new iPad mini comes out, will I get 128 gig? I will probably stretch to that just so that I can dump everything on there. That would be really, really great. Um, but so far, so good. A couple of things that I do not do on the iPad then, guys, I don't really use the camera at all, I don't really play games at all, and just that general sort of tablet use, I never whip it out in a room when I'm with my friends and start flicking about, showing random things and scrolling down Facebook and using it like that. I don't use it as a social device at all. I use it to benefit me in a professional, um, a professional way, and I use it for anything that's handy at the time. And do you know what? I think that's the way iPads should be used. I kind of, I, I get really sad sometimes the amount, seeing the amount of people that are glued to their smartphones like this and they're just zombies and they're flicking through, flicking through Facebook and Instagram aimlessly. And you know, if they're doing it on an iPad and they're going like this, just flicking through it. I find it, you know, a lot of people have turned into zombies like that and I am not one of those. I'm a very social, active person and I live in the now, I live in the real world. I'm a geek but social media does not control my life. So there are even, I don't even have most of the social media apps installed on, uh, on my iPad. I've got uh, Facebook Messenger installed because it's amazing how much you use that with clients. And clients may give you sort of like a, a gig specification that I want to read back on my iPad through a Facebook message and stuff. So you can't get away from it that easy. But what I'm trying to say is I don't use it in a sort of consumer play with it kind of toy way. Um, I try and use it properly and hey, don't get me wrong, you can use your iPod, uh, your iPad however you want. I'm not saying people that use it for social media are wrong. You can use it for whatever you want to. I'm just saying that I don't and I'm kind of glad because um, it's always a scary thing. If you get more technology, it's always scary maybe that you might get sucked into the void of using it a little bit too much. So the big question to finish off the video, was my iPad mini worth it and am I glad that I bought it? I really, really am. It's a rock solid device and if you don't own an iPad in some of the industries that I'm getting into now, then you're pretty much on your own and uh, it makes my life one heck of a lot easier. It's a lovely little device. I do enjoy using it. It's rock solid stable. I can't believe that I've said that probably about four times now. I just really do mean it. It's nice to have a device that's speedy and that works. So I hope you guys are a little bit more clear on how and why and where and, and blah, blah, blah. I use my <laughs> iPad. <laughs> and before I go off on any more tangents, guys, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, there will be another video tomorrow and the day after and next week. Loads more content for you to enjoy. If you have any more iPad questions that I didn't cover in this video, post them in the comment section below. I'm holding this up as if you're going to use your iPad to post the comment because I know a lot of people do that. I don't because I'm very slow at typing on this thing and I find it a pain in the ass, but hey, everyone is different. Huge thank you for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.